Well, the school year is over, and if you're anything like me, you just got a grade level assignment for a grade you've never taught before. But don't worry, stick around, and I've got the seven steps you can take over the summer to be prepped and ready for the new school year. Hello, my time crunch teachers, Marielle here, and today I'll be doing a chatty video all about switching grade levels and what you need to know about how to prepare for the switch during the summer. And I have a lot to prep for because I'll be moving from second grade all the way up to fifth. I'm actually really excited to move to fifth because I spent most of my career teaching sixth grade and because I've moved around a bit from teaching preschool to third grade after school to sixth grade and then I was a dean of students in a middle and high school for some time and then back down to second, I feel like I've gotten pretty good at this transition thing. So here are the steps I take as soon as I find out that I'm switching assignments. But they work well if you're also brand new to teaching and you'll be teaching in your very first classroom all on your own. And let me just be clear that there is nothing that says you need to work over the summer. These are just suggestions you can take to mentally prepare for the new school year and you could certainly do them in that teacher work week in August. But here are a few suggestions that help me prepare mentally for when I'm assigned a new role. My first tip is to reach out to your new grade level team and make sure that they are now your teacher besties because they are the ones who will be instrumental in your success. And if your school is small and you don't have a grade level team, meaning you're the only fifth grade teacher at your school, then go to the grade level below you because that fourth grade teacher is going to know everything about how that class works as a unit, what areas they're strong in, which areas they'll need support with. And knowing a little bit about the students you'll be getting is very, very key. And obviously your grade level team is going to know all of the curriculum you're gonna to have to teach. So make friends with your new team as they are gonna be key players in how well your year is going to go. In fact, I'm such a strong proponent for a tight grade level team that one of my current second grade team teachers is also going to fifth grade because apparently we're a package deal. But more on that on a future podcast episode, check it out if you want to hear me and my lunch bunch teacher besties chat about all things elementary. Except, oh wait, now we're gonna be on different lunch schedules, boo. All right, step two. After you've met with your grade level team, it's time to focus on curriculum, but don't waste your time spending the summer diving into the entire year's worth of material. I mean, it's good to know where you're going to go, but it's not worth it to plan out an entire year before you get to know your students and their abilities. So grab the teacher's manuals and student's books for just the first unit of each subject that you'll be teaching. Look them over and get an idea of the type of content you're gonna be teaching. Also, be sure to ask the team if there are any big projects or field trips that they like to do so that you can be prepared for those. If for some reason you don't have access to the curriculum, like maybe you're transferring to a school in a new district or state, then at least go to the State Department Education website and familiarize yourself with the grade level's content standards and topics or themes. Okay, item number three is to ask your team if they'd be willing to share their weekly schedule with you. It doesn't have to be detailed lesson plans, just an overview of the content blocks so that you have an idea of how much time you'll need to plan for each subject. It'll also give you an idea of the district required minutes for your content areas. And if you're really nice, your new team might even be willing to share their lesson plans with you or spend some time Time working with you on yours. It's really important to understand why their schedule is set up this way because they've probably set it that way for a reason. Of course, there's no reason why you have to follow it exactly like they do, but it will keep you from having to start from scratch or accidentally not plan enough time for specific content areas. After you have a basic understanding of the content, it's time for step four, which is to start wrapping your head around the developmental stages of the age group you'll be teaching. Because I was teaching middle school for so long, I completely forgot how much modeling and repetition the younger grades needed. Like you can't just write something on the board and say, okay, copy this, but I know that now. <laughs> Additionally, if you're moving Moving from upper elementary or junior high down to lower elementary, be ready for these things. Birthday celebrations, so get your crowns printed and cut out now. Lost teeth and shoelaces, especially wet shoelaces. If you're moving from the lower grades up, 
forget about all that stuff and get ready to have a room full of desks. So for example, I teach in California and currently my district in second grade is capped at 24 students for enrollment. But now I am moving to fifth grade where the cap is 34. So I'll be in the exact same classroom with approximately 10 more desks in the exact same space. So be sure to think about how you're going to use the space in your classroom. In fact, when I get back into the classroom in August, I hope to show you how I plan on setting up my classroom for instruction for the older students. It's also important to think about the age group and their interests. The younger students love bright colors and maybe like cutesy decor, but it might read a little babyish with the older students. So make sure your centers, decor, classroom management systems work for the new grade level that you will be teaching. Speaking of classroom management, let's talk about step number five, which is to think about your new management system. Mine looks a little different for most teachers and that I don't really like doing external rewards or punishments. I could probably spend a long time going into the reasons of why that is. But my short answer is this. I don't want a record keep. I don't want to spend my money on toys or prizes. And I found that not every external reward works for every student. And I'd rather spend my time building routines and procedures that foster an intrinsic reward and community in my class. But with that said, do what comes easy for you. If you have an awesome rewards or point system, then use it. Just make sure you modify it for the age group you're working with. Stickers can be kind of fun or silly with middle school, but it's definitely not going to get them to write that research paper. And while I've seen table or group points work really effectively with older students, it's going to be much trickier with the littles since they're still learning how to work as a team. So ask around. See what other teachers in your grade bands are doing and what they have to say. But ultimately, do what comes natural to you and know that you can always pivot. If something isn't working after a couple of weeks, feel free to do a bit of research and ask the other teachers for suggestions. You can always reboot your system after a holiday weekend or short school break like Thanksgiving. All right. Item number six is a bit of advice I've heard from a lot of teachers, and it's this. Share your passions. Regardless of your grade level, students love getting excited about what you're excited about. So for example, I thought my second graders were going to get bored with my gardening unit, but as soon as I busted out a bucket of worms and compost bin, they lost their minds. And yes, they even put stickers on the mini composter so that, and I quote, the worms house could be cute. So if you have a hobby or interest or even just a favorite animal, share it with your students. Your excitement will spread to them and they'll feed off the energy that you project. Finally, I want to share my last suggestion, and that's to enjoy the new experience. I know it can sometimes feel like a sort of bummer to get a grade assignment that maybe wasn't your first choice, especially since so much of grade level assignments are based off of student enrollment. So oftentimes there are switches that happen every year, which is all to say that this isn't going to happen just once in your career. So you might as well have fun. Consider it an opportunity to transfer your current skill set to a different application in a new grade level. There are so many cool things about each grade level that I absolutely love, and it's things that I didn't necessarily realize until I was in front of the kids. So for example, there is so much the students in upper elementary can do independently. It's actually kind of surprising to see how much they can totally do on their own. And in the lower grades, they make so much progress so fast that it's amazing to see their rapid growth. So please just take delight in the funny things that they do. <laughs> For example, my students in second grade saw the same birds outside every day of their life. But the second I put up a bird feeder outside my classroom window, you would have thought that they had first row tickets to the zoo. They literally squealed the first time that they saw a little bird in the feeder and they all ran over and it was adorable. But 
Lord help you, if you teach the lower grades and a B gets stuck in your classroom, you'll spend a chaotic five minutes swatting out the B while pushing aside screaming children, only to finally get the B out, and then you'll spend the next 20 minutes of your life listening to B stories until recess. So good luck. Anyway, if you are brand new to teaching and would like to see more teaching tips, then check out this playlist with all my videos geared specifically towards those just entering the teaching field. And if you happen to be watching this right before school starting, then check out this playlist focused on setting up and organizing your classroom for the upcoming school year and beyond.